एस चांद प्रेजेंट्स एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एस पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम ever heard about the terms brazing and soldering in this part of the video we'll learn about the concepts of brazing and soldering hello everyone i am anmol bhatia and welcome to s chan academy in this video we'll be learning about the basic concepts behind brazing and soldering this is the first part of the video in the first part of the video we'll be learning about the concepts of brazing and in the next part of the video we'll be learning about the soldering process for detailed conceptual clarity you can refer to the book by s chand publishing the link of the book is there in the description box below so in this part of the video we'll be learning about the brazing concept and this topic is there in the course manufacturing practices Firstly let us look at the concept of brazing the basic definition or the basic concept behind brazing in brazing what happens we do not melt the metal rather we generally heat the metal and provide that filler material in between that uh, gap which is there and because of the heating the filler material flows in between that gap because of the capillary action as you can see the definition that here the base metal do not melt but the joint is obtained by the means of the filler material as you can see in the diagram uh, that we have to join two materials and here in these two materials are called as the base material we will uh, heat that base material and provide a suitable gap in between the two and in between that gap the liquid filler material the filler material which is which will come in the liquid state that will flow because of the capillary action and ultimately a joint is created that particular joint is called as the brazed joint so brazing is basically a joining process in which the joint is made with the help of the filler material so here this temperature range is very important the the melting point of that filler material should be above 450 degree celsius and the filler material is basically drawn with the help of capillary action as you can see on the board because of the capillary action the the filler material will flow in between the gap and creates that particular joint and that joint is there in between the two parts and uh, there is a requirement that this gap this particular gap needs to be controlled critically now depending upon uh, the type of material that you want to brace we have different types of filler material let's say for an example a uh, copper based material is generally used for brazing the ferrous materials so in order to weld or in order to uh, brace the ferrous material we majorly use the copper based materials this is uh, just for a sake of an example then we come to the process of the brazing here the process of brazing involves the cleaning of surfaces you have two base metals you have initially you have to clean the surfaces and then we'll be applying the flux on the surface of the joint that we want to create then we will heat that joint or after heating we'll bring that uh, particular filler material in a liquid state and uh, we'll apply that filler material in between that gap so that it flows easily in between that gap with the help of the capillary action as i have demonstrated the same with the help of the diagram on solidification of the filler material the joint is particularly formed so this is the basic process behind the brazing now let us look at the process one by one in in uh, case of the cleaning of the work pieces or the cleaning of the surfaces we majorly use acid pickling process in which we if we want to remove the oxides or if we want to remove the scales on the surface of the work pieces we can use this acid pickling process or we can uh, sometimes use solvents to remove the oil or grease which is there on the surface of the work piece so this is the first and the foremost process that the work piece should be clean and we can use this acid pickling process or we can use the solvents in order to 
remove the layer from the surface or clean the surface uh, before brazing. Now we have seen the cleaning part. Now the second step is to apply the flux to the joint. Firstly, let us understand why this flux is applied. So flux is basically applied to remove any oxides which may form because of that heating. So we apply the flux. The flux material that we majorly use can be borax or boric acid or chlorides or fluorides in this brazing process. For ferrous materials, we use boric acid and borax and for aluminium or copper or stainless steel, we use alkaline bifluorides. So this is for the sake of certain examples so that one can easily uh, depict which kind of flux is required for which kind of uh, material to be braced. Then we have understood uh, about the cleaning of the surface and applying the flux to the joint. Now the next step is to heat the joint so that when it comes in contact with the filler material, the filler material uh, flows in between that gap. So in order to heat the joint, we have these processes. Uh, the major, majorly used process is the torch brazing process. First one is the torch brazing process, then the dip brazing, induction brazing, resistance brazing and the furnace brazing process. In the torch brazing process, what happens? We have uh, an oxyacetylene torch in which the combination of oxygen and acetylene is used in order to heat the surface of the workpiece. Uh, the second case is the dip brazing in which we have a molten salt bath or a metal bath and that molten salt bath or a metal bath is used to supply the heat to the base metal. So because of that heat, the, the heating of the joint is being created. Then third thing is we have the induction brazing case. Induction brazing, in this case what happens, the heat basically is produced with the help of high frequency currents and that high frequency current is being induced in the workpiece with the help of the coils. So here we have electrical coils and those electrical coils will induce a high frequency current on the surface of the workpiece that ultimately uh, heats the surface. Then fourth we have the resistance heating and in, in this part basically we use the resistance concept in order to heat the surfaces. So resistance concept is basically related to that law which is H equals to I square RT in which we give current and uh, voltages value so that ultimately the, the workpiece is subjected to the heat which is being produced because of that resistance action. And lastly, we have the furnace brazing. We have the heated furnace and in that heated furnace, we can heat the, uh, the workpiece under the controlled atmosphere so that there is no contamination with the atmospheric gases. So these are the processes in which we heat the joint. So the case is clear in which we learned about cleaning of the surfaces. Then we have said or we have explained about the flux part, how do we apply flux and why do we apply flux and thirdly, how do we heat that joint in order to uh, bring that uh, liquid temperature attainment of that filler material. Now we applied that filler material to the heated metal source. Now what happens that filler material flows in between that gap which is maintained between the joint and because of that gap maintenance, the capillary action is created and because of that capillary action, what happens? The, the filler material will flow inside that gap and ultimately creates a joint. So on solidification, it will majorly create a joint. Now let us look at certain advantages and limitations of the brazing process. The first and the foremost advantage is we can uh, join any sort of dissimilar metals in this category of joining. Then if we are joining the two metals with the help of this process, then it would lead to lesser distortion uh, as seen in the final product. Then here the skill that we require in the general welding process is lesser uh, in case of brazing because generally we want the heating of that metal and that filler material flows in between the gap. 
And lastly, this process is a quicker process and also the process is economical as compared to the arc welding process or other welding processes. Then we have certain disadvantages of the brazing process. Number one disadvantage is it is not suitable for joining the aluminium or the magnesium uh, metals as magnesium is having the low melting point so it will melt easily and the second stage is it is not suitable for the high temperature applications due to the low melting temperature of the filler material. So whenever it is subjected to whenever we want the we want to melt the material and the melting point of the material is quite high. So in that situation we cannot use this brazing process because this filler material cannot flow in that particular gap. So for that we cannot use this brazing process and uh, the other uh, disadvantage is the color need not to match with the base metal. Let's say I have tol told about that uh, we majorly use copper. So for that we can use a, a brown, we, we may get a brown color or a brown coating on the surface because of that filler material and that color may not match with the base material that we are welding. So if you are concerned about aesthetics, so this is basically the disadvantage of the brazing process. Then ultimately it requires a costly equipment for heating. I have told you that we have a variety of uh, procedures for heating. Maybe an induction furnace is used or uh, a dip uh, process is used in, in, in category of brazing. So in that particular situation it, it leads to a costly affair and uh, that will be a major disadvantage of this brazing process. Now coming to the certain applications of the brazing process. The first and the foremost application of the brazing process is it is majorly used for joining the dissimilar metals. The other aspect is for uh, maintenance or repair works on the cycles or the motorcycle frames we may use this brazing processes. For uh, joining the heat exchangers in case of heat exchangers where we want to join in the surfaces of uh, the cylinder which is there inside the heat exchanger. So for that we can use the brazing process in which there, there is a requirement of a continuous uh, um, joining uh, so that any sort of heat cannot be liberated or uh, is not required to be released during the operation. So for that situation we can use a brazing um, procedure and then it is also uh, required in case of repair of the cast iron components also. So this is as far as the brazing part is concerned. So in the in this part of the video we have learnt about the basic concept of brazing in which I have told you that we primarily don't melt the metal rather we heat the metal and we allow that filler material to flow inside the gap so that a particular joint is created. Coming to uh, certain advantages of the process it is basically used for uh, joining the dissimilar metals and the major disadvantage of this process is the color matching. The color matching is sometimes uh, a requirement of the customer but uh, this is a basic disadvantage of the process. We can go for repair uh, works or we can go for uh, the cast iron repair works with the help of this brazing techniques. In the next part of the video we will be learning about the soldering techniques. To watch the video of the second part, you can click the link in the description box. So with this, we come to the end of the first part of the video wherein we learnt the basic details of the arc welding process and uh, we have also seen some video presentations of the same. In the next part of the video, we will be learning about the variants of the arc welding process. For detailed conceptual clarity, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing. The link of the book is there in the description box below. If you find the video interesting, like, share, subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for future updates. Thank you. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.